Uh, Raman Pachedo uh, Pardo, he is the head of the uh, International Studies Program uh, and Professor of International Relations at King's College London. Thank you for joining us here on France 24. Thanks for having me. Uh, let's quickly pick up on that last point made by Robert Parsons, because it, it's tricky to navigate for the Koreans. Uh, what it's, Last week, uh, the, the Financial Times reported that uh, the U.S. was pressuring them not to sell uh, semiconductors to China should there be uh, a, a tenser uh, trade to, uh, relationship between Washington and Beijing? Yes, what we are seeing is that the, the U.S. Is, is putting pressure on allies and partners uh, to uh, contribute to its uh, economic policy towards China, which of course is based on uh, reducing links as much as possible in high technology sectors, and one of them is semiconductors. And we see that South Korea is one of the countries uh, that is under pressure from the U.S. to do so. It has to be said that South Korean companies have been diversifying uh, away from China for a number of years now, uh, well before this uh, confrontation between China and the U.S., economic confrontation. But now there is also the political push by the U.S. for the South Korean president and the South Korean government to press pressure its own companies not to sell the latest technologies to China yeah, at the very least in the semiconductor sector. Now, with uh, the uh, superpower showdown between the U.S. and China, with the war in Ukraine, uh, is it a case where North Korea has sort of fallen off the radar for many? I think so. I, I think so. We see far less discussion about North Korea, of course, in the U.S., here in Europe as well, uh, but even in South Korea. In South Korea, obviously, South Korea is always going to be uh, looking at the threat coming from North Korea, but you see how its foreign and security policy now is looking at what is happening here in Europe with Russia's uh, aggression of Ukraine and whether this could have implications for the relationship between China and Taiwan. You see South Korea focusing uh, much more on the uh, Indo-Pacific region and again uh, the potential threats coming from China in the, in the South China Sea, in the East China Sea, uh, in other parts of the region. And, and you, you do feel when uh, you talk to South Korean officials and experts that even though North Korea was, of course is still the top priority, they are also focusing on many other issues that they think uh, right now are equally relevant. And when North Korea steps up its uh, 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 missile tests like it's been doing lately, is that just attention-seeking behavior? I don't think so. I don't think at this point. I think at this point, uh, Kim Jong-un made clear uh, a while ago that he wants to continue developing the missile and nuclear program that North Korea has. Uh, and I don't think he's trying to get uh, the U.S.'s attention because he's been unsuccessful in doing so for, for many years now, really not only months. Uh, I, I think he's really trying to uh, develop uh, North Korean capabilities as much as possible because, of course, the U.S. and South Korea are strengthening the alliance, and this is not good for North Korea. But at the same time, South Korea is also developing its own capabilities, uh, and in some areas, for example, uh, missiles, uh, South Korean technology is ahead of North Korean technology. So North Korea feels that needs to catch up in this area. Uh, you heard uh, Robert Parsons uh, describe the, uh, the cheers uh, in Congress. Is this standard fare? Uh, any South Korean president uh, knows where he's going when he's in Washington, or is Yoon suk Yul particularly a uh, an Americanophile. Yes, he's very uh, Americanophile. You're, you're right about that. Uh, I don't think this would happen with a previous president, Moon Jae-in, which many Americans thought uh, he was trying to balance uh, the U.S. against China. Uh, we, saw, we saw it during the PAC administration, so before Moon. Uh, he also received an standing uh, ovation, but I think Yoon is even more pro-American uh, than PAC was. Uh, PAC was also trying to balance the U.S. and China when it came to South Korean foreign policy. And I think with Yoon, you see how he's moving really close to the U.S. and other U.S. allies and partners, such as, uh, of course, Japan, but also Australia, Canada, and Europe as well. Yoon is a nationalist. Are you surprised at uh, how much ties have deepened with Japan? No, not necessarily. I mean, it, it has to be said that uh, the policy that he's pursuing, uh, first of all, he indicated it was going to be his policy as soon as he uh, took office. 
And it also has to be said, uh, around 60% of South Koreans think that June should take maybe a different approach, uh, not necessarily a tougher approach towards Japan, uh, but at least to get more reciprocity uh, from Kishida, the, the Japanese uh, Prime Minister. But it's also true that many South Koreans want to improve relations uh, with Japan. There's the his there are the historical grievances, but many South Koreans, and of course also many Japanese, uh, these days they realize that China, North Korea, Russia, they are threats to both countries. So, so they feel that they need to improve relations because in Northeast Asia, along with Taiwan, they are the two only uh, democracies that we have in the region. Ramon, uh, Robert Parsons and I are sitting here in Paris. One final question for you. H how much does Ukraine weigh on the minds in a speech like the one we just heard before Congress? I think, uh, I think it is in the, in, in the minds of uh, Congress people in the US and, and in South Korean minds. And we have seen South Korean reach uh, military uh, arms sales uh, deals with countries such as Poland, and also discussions with uh, Romania, with Estonia, of course, also with the US. Uh, and I think it is known that these weapons that are coming to European countries, potentially to the US, are helping with the uh, backfilling that we need in Europe to be able to support Ukraine uh, as it fights uh, against Russia. So I think this is very much present uh, in the discussion taking place between South Korea and the US, and uh, when you discuss this with uh, South Korean government officials and, and experts, uh, it is clear that they feel that they need to support uh, Europe, uh, the US uh, and NATO. As it if, is if I may just butt in there and against, just ask uh, you a, a follow-on question to that. Uh, President Yoon spoke quite clearly uh, about Ukraine at the end of his speech. Do you think the message he sent at the end of the speech is what the Ukrainian government is wanting to hear at the moment? Because the Ukrainian government has made absolutely clear that what they want from South Korea, which is one of the major arms producers in Asia, uh, is armaments, and in particular, ammunition. Uh, there's been a problem in South Korea about the provision of ammunition because of its own legislation in the past. But was that a signal, do you think, today from President Yoon that South Korea is prepared to move beyond that and start supplying the ammunition that the Ukrainians clearly desperately need at the moment with that counteroffensive lo looming just over the horizon? Yeah, that, that, that's a great question. Uh, I think that it will be still difficult for South Korea to provide this ammunition directly to Ukraine, but I do think that South Korea is going to move ahead with providing ammunition to the US that later on either the US can transfer to Ukraine or it can use to transfer its own ammunition to Ukraine. Same with uh, Europe, by the way. Uh, there's a discussion about doing the same with Poland. Uh, and then Poland could decide what to do with ammunition, or it could send its own ammunition to Ukraine and start a backfilling process uh, with this transfer coming from South Korea. Uh, so I think he's moving his country in that direction, yes. Ramon Pacheto Pardo, I want to thank you so much for joining us uh, from London. I want to thank as well uh, Robert Parsons.